good day. Uh, the code required from us to study the flexibility of the pipe at the thermal reaction, and we had explained this in our last uh, presentation, and also to study the sustained load, which is the weight of the pipe plus the uh, content of the pipe, uh, the flow content flow inside the pipe. Uh, today I'm coming to give you an example and hand calculation on how we doing this and how to apply the equation of the code. I'm Ahmed Ibrahim and let's start our presentation. As I had mentioned, uh, the ASM EP 31.3 in paragraph 319, uh, which is titled by Piping Flexibility Request from us to study the flexibility of the pipe through the thermal action uh, or the thermal effect uh, on the pipe and request from us to study that stress SE should be less than the allowable stresses. Uh, also he had given us this equations uh, to uh, study it or to use it as a study as a limitation for our studies. Uh, the flexibility stresses, which is the SE, which mentioned as allowable the displacement stress range, uh, give it by square root the axial stresses plus the bending stresses all under square plus two uh, torsion stresses square. Okay. And he also gave the axial stresses should be the uh, self, the axial self times the force, uh, axial force divided by the uh, cross section area of the pipe. Also, he mentioned that the, the torsional stresses should be the self torsional times the, uh, the moment torsional divided by two times the section modulus of the pipe. The bending stresses also, as mentioned in the equation, the, it is the square root of the self multiplied by the moments in plan and out of plan divided by the section modulus. By the way, while we are working, I will show you that this section modulus should be changed as per the requirement of the code. It differs from the reduced T and the equal T. Let's start our example. Uh, first, we will go to the scissor. Let me give it to you step by step that I will explain to you how to model in the scissor tool in this session. Let us say that we will do a new, uh, a new, a new model uh, here. Say uh, example. And we mention we choose piping input, and we can choose where can we uh, the file the folder that we can save our our okay, and press okay. Now the scissor or the software will open the input uh, file. Before we enter the input file, he, he asked me which unit and let me review the units that I'm using. Usually I'm using the SI bar, uh, which is more commonly used for me. Press OK. This is the input uh, page. Uh, usually it comes with uh, white background, but I prefer to use black uh, background and I will explain in the presentation where I will explain the input uh, the input sheet, uh, how you can change this. Let me give you a brief, uh, a brief uh, or quick, uh, ex uh, a quick explanation. Uh, this, the toolbars that are used uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the maneuver between the nodes and continue nodes. Uh, this is the breaking and the delete board. Uh, 
this is the global coordinates which we need to uh, explain to the model uh, where exactly you are starting your pipe if you are having an elevation uh, also this is the use for the valve that, that expansion joint the uh, spring and this is the title this is spring and this is to calculate the sieves uh, and this is the dmv wall thickness calculation and this is the main setup that you should use which is the ambient temperature if you have the F J FRB or GRB, uh, if you need to make the north toward, for example, the X, that's usually what I'm doing. If you, you need to uh, activate the pardon, and you should make the setup and press OK. As you can see, when I change the the X to the negative no uh, negative X to the north, it changed. Also, you have here the input sheet this input sheet where this is the nodes form two this is the where you entering your uh, dimension this is diameter and wall thickness uh, the corrosion and metal tolerance and fluid and pipe density temperatures where you enter your temperature this is the where you entering the if you need a pen the reducer the ceph the expansion joints if you need it when you are using it this is where you're entering the strains, uh, hang if you will need to design the program to design the hangers, if you want to enter displacement, nozzle check, nozzle flexible as per the WRC. And here where you're entering the force uniform load for the seismic, the wind. Okay, let's uh, let's start. And this is for the codes. Uh, we will use our code as the P31.3. And uh, we need to start with a restraint. We we you mentioning its anchor. From this, uh, we will move this side three thousand uh, uh, meter or three meters. Uh, you can enter it either with three thousand because we are using three millimeters, or you can use three and put extra comma upside comma. And press OK, and he will understand that it's three meters. Here, the, our diameter is eight inch standard wall thickness. Uh, we don't. We are. We are using simplest, so we no need to use this. Our melt tolerance is twelve point five. We don't have a corrosion. We need to use water, so we will use uh, one specific gravity. Our temperature is 250 Celsius. Our pressure will be 25 bars. Uh, our material will be uh, carbon steel A106 grade B. When we use when we use it, we'll find that the uh, software get the data from its his library. We, we, we will mention elastic modulus, the Poisson's ratio. And here he give you the allowable thermal stresses uh, because we are using 250. He, he took from the table that 250 will be 132.125, and the cold uh, stresses is uh, 137.9. Okay, uh, we need to make a bend, so we'll press here bend. Uh, once he mentioned long bend, that means that it's the normal bending, which is 1.5, the reduce. Uh, and press continue to jump to the next uh, node. And we need to go down 2 meters. Uh, press continue, or you can, use, uh, you can put, I think... Uh, Modeling. You find it here. Yes, con alt C. Alt C. Minus two. And we need to put a strain at node four and anchor. How can we know, uh, see the nodes? You can press here and you will see the nodes. Okay, we need to make a branch right now. So we press continue. 
and change. We need to make the branch here at 30. So you can make, write 30 here and the branch will start. Uh, this branch will be 100 meter in the Z direction, in this direction. So it's... Okay, we need also to mention that uh, we need also to make it anchor here. Okay. We need to mention to the software that this is a welding T. So you will go press here, you, it will be highlighted by yellow, and press Seth or T. He give you the number of the node and you mention it's welding. Uh, this naming, how can I know the T from the well, blah, 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 or oh, which T, uh, you, if you remember, I showed you this table in the P31.3 Appendix D. This table contains the name. We can open it here, Appendix D, but, uh, put in mind, that this table had been deleted in 2000, uh, uh, in, 2000 in 2020 already been deleted so we're not finding this uh, appendix anymore appendix D, this one elbow plus spacing which is the mitre uh, single mitre welding T this is the one that we are using Okay. And here we are, cre we, we had created our model. We just run a check. It gave you the specific gravity. This is a, not important information for you right now. Press run. Okay, uh, I had forget, forgotten something to explain it. This is the, uh, this is the lock case based on the code. Uh, the only thing that, uh, is not mentioning the occasional, the code is giving you the occasion, but this is the main requested load cases. You can use it from here even. Uh, this the operation, the alternative sustained in the presentation of the load case, I will explain every load case and why we are using the sustained and the expansion joint. You can press analysis and we'll, you will go back to the analysis. Okay. This is how we are doing the, uh, our, our input, and this is the, uh, our, out, uh, our output uh, page, or windows. Let us go back to this uh, presentation where I can have the calculation. Okay, we have a header, 8 inch, and we have a print, 6 inch. We need to uh, calculate the stresses based on the... Uh, Request acquisition from P31.3, uh, paragraph 319. So we need to calculate the axial stresses, the bending stresses, and the torsional stresses. And in the end, we need to calculate the flexibility stresses. How can we do this? First of all, uh, we will calculate the inside diameter. Then we will calculate the cross sectional area. After we will calculate the uh, section modulus, which is the moment of inertia divided the R and uh, the R, the radius, the outside radius of the branch. We are working on the branch. All of this, we are studying the branch. Okay. Uh, so, uh, moment of inertia is the pi divided by 64 times to the outside diameter of the branch to power to 4 minus the inside power, diameter of the branch power to 4. This is the output, this is the radius, and if you divide them together, the, this will be the output. This is the important part in the calculation. 
calculating the CIF. How we calculate the CIF? Uh, I'm using the P31.3 Appendix D. Uh, up until now, the version of the Caesar is working on the uh, P31.3 2018, I think. Then this is why you the software is still calculating based on this appendix. If you need to update it, you will need to go to the FEA and run the uh, the CEF uh, on the FEA tool and getting the CEF uh, for the P31J and uh, make the input inside the software as I as I showed to you last presentation. So, okay. Uh, what we will do, we will go to here and we have this. We, first of all, we will calculate the uh, flexibil flexibility character. Then we applied and we, then we will get the inside and the outside of plane for the SEF. So we go back. We calculate the R which is the radius of the header, then we calculate the H, the flexibility factor, because we need the R here. Then we calculate the Ceph uh, inside, which is the I small, and the in plane. Uh, the axial uh, Ceph is equal to the out of plane uh, Ceph, and the torsional Ceph is equal to one, as they mentioned here. Okay, you find it here in this paragraph and this one as it's mentioned here. Okay. Uh, after we calculating the Ceph, uh, there's a point I forgot to mention it. Uh, let's go back to the code. The design. Here. Uh, this is the equation of the bending code using the sectional models. But the code mentioned if the branch. Uh, I'll take from the as is or determined by experimental analytical means of the blah 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 blah. If the branch is reduced t or reducing branch, you need to calculate the effective section modulus of the branch, which means that z will be z e. Okay. This equation will be applied, equation number 19 will be applied in the equality. Equation number 20 will be applied in the reduced uh, T branch or reduced branch. And the difference between them that here we is using the section models, but here is using the effective section models. So we can go back to our presentation. Here I'm calculating the effective section models. We calculate the, uh, sorry the radius of the pipe, the effective radius of the pipe for the branch, then we calculate the uh, effective uh, section models. Here he mentioned the effective thickness. The effective thickness should be the minimum between the header thickness or the self times the branch thickness. And here we use the, I think the header thickness. Yes, the header thickness. Okay. Now, after we calculate the CEFs and we adjust our, the requirement for the section models, now we need to have the reaction forces. The reaction forces, from where we get the reaction forces, we will go to the output of our uh, software. We will use for the load case, ex uh, the expansion load case forces. Why are you are using the expansion load case? Because the expansion load case in CSER meaning means that you are using uh, mean the difference or the uh, action that had been happened between the settle where the sustain where there's no operation 
and the operation. Operation load case, it's studying the operation with the sustain. This one is only the operation, is only what it's not sorry, it's operation, it's only what had been happened from the settled system to operating system. This is why we are using the expansion uh, case. And by the way, uh, the operation uh, the operation case, if you put the stresses, you will not find that the system are using any allowables uh, against it because this this uh, load case is not used to uh, or is not applied to study the uh, uh, the code requirements but if you go to this one and run the stresses you will find that he's using the allowable cases and i will go back and explain uh, while uh, in the end of my presentation i will show you from where he got this expansion, uh, this allowable cases. Uh, let's go back to our presentation. Now we need to get the forces. Uh, we will uh, highlight the expansion load case and we go to global element forces report. Since we are using, uh, we are studying the branch, so we will have the 30 to 50. Uh, Report this is the, the area where we have the branch. We have force in the x direction, we have force in the y direction, we have force in the z direction, and the moments in the three directions. We need, I will open just to show you. Okay, we need to get the FA, which is the axial force. The axial force is in this direction the tension in this direction and this is why we will take the fz for this there is a mistake here this force is wrong let me go back Yes, I forget to change this diameter. We need to put it to six and standard. This is our example. Let's rerun it again. How I know the mistake, I know because I get this forces before and it should be the same. Yes, you'll find us the same forces. Okay. Uh, right now we so we will have this force as an axial force FA. Okay. We need to get the torsional force. The torsional force is the force that will oh sorry torsional moment. This the the moment where we squeeze this pipe or make a torsion on this pipe and this in this case it should be mz this one and we need to get the in plane uh, moment the in plane moment in this case will be the moment around mx because it will keep rounding on the same surface and the out of plane moment it will be my because if it, we are using it it will go outside of the plane the branch will go outside of the plane so based on this we have fa this is the fx mt the mz mi is the mx mo is the my we get it from the report that i showed you now we start to calculate the stresses we use the uh, sa times ia uh, if we need to get the axial stresses it will be the sef axial self times the force, the axial force, plus pressure times the inside area divided by the cross-section area. But in our case, since we are studying the thermal uh, stresses, P, it, it will be equal to zero, the pressure will be equal to zero, so it will be axial force times uh, the self axial divided by the cross-section, 
and if you look this is why he give you this equation like this and remember in this case that meaning that the expansion stresses is not considering the pressure while he's calculating the stresses put this in mind uh, also the torsional stresses is equal to the self uh, torsional times moment mt divided by the, uh, the section modulus and it will give us this number uh, also the p the pending stresses the same and in the end will be the same uh, this number uh, you can apply this and use it by your hand let's go and compare our results with the As you can see, the axial stress is 27.84, FA is 278 If you have an older version, you may found that uh, the CEF is not used uh, because in the older version, and this is too older, too much older version, because uh, the axial CEF had been applied since 2012, I think. That is me, 2012, if I remember right. Uh, but this older version that is not considering this so sometimes you will find it it's force times uh, divided by the area only also the bending stresses we go to the bending stresses here it's 4.12.4 uh, it's here 4.11.6 this is um, most properly because of the long equation and then a lot of decimals because it's different in decimals. Also, the torsional 12.9, torsional is 12.8, which is 12.9. And sorry, here's our stuff is 1.996 and 2.38. Our stuff is 2.328, and here it's I'm reduce the decimal to 2 but it's 1.996 okay uh, also in the end the SE was 440.2 and it's here 440.1 so I think we are more or less the same uh, you need to apply this by your hand it will be very helpful to you uh okay remaining the allowables keep the allowable in the end i will explain it why okay the second uh after we finish this calculation uh let's try to apply also the sustained load uh the sustained load here or the sustained stresses in general it's studying the pressure weights uh, occasional also the occasional loads like wind seismic water hammering if we have a snow but first we calculate the sl which is the sustained load and it for the uh, for the sustain we are comparing it to the uh, hot stresses and for the Occasional load, we multiply the hot stresses by 1.33 based on the P3 to 1.3. Okay. Uh, this is the equation. I bring it to you uh, from uh, the code. Uh, we need to read this. For branch, uh, use equation 323.2 only when the IO, uh, which is the indices, and the ii is based up to the i the subs taken from appendix z when both the ncs the in plane and out plane ncs are taken from the asme p31g or determined by experimental or analytical means asme p31.g non-mandatory appendix used you will not need to 
use this equation and this time you will use this equation directly no need to use the effective uh, section models so we need to take care if you are using the p31j this equation is not applied and this equation is the applied same by the way in here if you are using the p31j you will use this one not the effective ex um, the effective section models here i'm using the effective section models because i'm depending on the appendix d in my calculation okay so what i'm doing here i uh, use the uh, this one i use the appendix i depend on the steps to calculate my uh, uh, sustained uh, stresses index uh, so uh, my inside index is the maximum between the 0.75 of Ceph in plane uh, sorry this is a mistake uh, it should be Ceph outside and I make a mistake this should be outside Ceph and this, this should be the inside Ceph or one and since this is the bigger we I use 1.4957 and the same, I the 1.75. The axial indices is one. The torsional indices is one, based on uh, this is taken by one, and here is taken by one. Okay, this is in the absence of more applicable data. Remember this. If you uh, watched my last presentation, you will understand what's the meaning of no more applicable data okay uh how we will get the reaction force the same what we are doing here we will go but in this time in sustain and global force and open you will find that the fz is the axial and the mz is the moment is the torsional moment the mx is the in plane moment the my is the out of plane moment so we go back to the presentation this is the forces we will calculate the inside uh, area uh, and i'll tell you why we will, we will we will calculate the inside area because in this time in the sustain it's mainly depend on the pressure as i mentioned we calculate the uh, the pressure and the weight is mainly the sustain based on the pressure and the weight uh, so we will uh, consider the pressure here which is will pp uh, pressure equal 25 bars so we use the axial index which equal to one times the force uh, the axial force plus uh, the pressures times the inside area all divided by the cross section and in the end it will give you this number we will calculate the torsion stresses and it will give you this number bending stresses this number and the uh, sustained uh, stresses will give you in the end this number let's go and compare it with our model that's lb uh, this is the hope we will uh, uh by the way also the hope we can calculate the hope by the way the uh, the uh, the software is calculating the hoop stress based on this equation okay how you can know this uh, if we go back to the input and we run our configuration file And in this configuration file, we mentioned use PD divided by 4T. This is the equation for the code, the old equation of the code. We close it and we make it for, uh, false. And as you can see, also we mentioned that he used the maximum shear stress in the uh, calculation, not the von Mises. Okay, let's go back to our calculation and to our input, sorry, out, output, sorry. So in the stain, 
in our presentation you can find that um, uh, calculating it as p times to the uh, inside diameter of the branch divided by the outside diameter of the branch minus subtracted from it the inside diameter of the branch and this will be equal 12.9 if you go to the code we go to the stresses here you found it 12.9 he does not calculate the uh, fa because it's too small as you can see sorry the fa is 12.9 also but he mentioned it as sp uh the bending moments is 0.39 take it as four uh torsional here we calculate the torsion is 0 0.029 so he considered it as zero because he want use one decimal only uh, the indices, as you can see, it's mentioned 1.497. The NC, our indices uh, is 1.497 for the outside and for the inside, uh, for the outside is 1.746. Okay. And the SL in the end is equal to 13.29, equal 13.3. Here. As you can see, the allowable here is equal to 132.1. As I mentioned in my uh, presentation, that uh, the sustained load is compared to the heat, uh, the hot stresses. So we need to go to Appendix A. And uh, in Appendix A, we need to go to... Uh, Appendix uh, table A one M and in table A one M we need to go to uh, A uh, A carbon steel A hundred and six grade B which is line thirty one and extract the cold uh, stresses and hot stresses. The cold stress in the, on the ambient, which is 138 megapascal, and at 250, it will be at 250, 123. This is where the software got the number. This number is coming from here, 132. Okay, because we're comparing the sustained load with the Hey, hot uh, the hot stresses okay if we go back as you can see i get it from this table remember when i mentioned that we i will calculate you uh, the allowable stresses uh, for the flexible at the end i calculated i i postpone it to the end so i can use the sl where i calculate it from here in the end it's a book calculation so it's depending on each other so i need to calculate the sustain uh, to calculate the maximum and the the allowable stresses uh, you will ask me why i'm not using this uh, equation uh, because the code uh, had updated this equation as you can see uh, as you can see uh, he mentioned when the uh, heat stresses is greater than the sustained stresses between uh, the difference between them may be added uh, to term 0.25xh in the equation 1a and in the end you will have this equation but the code if you uh, want to see what exactly equation had been used by the code you can simply close this and go to help run the quick reference guides and in the code section you will find the equation that he's using for every code. This is, has been explained here. 
and as you can see the SLP is been used uh, this is the equation the code approximation this to be used by hand calculation but this one is the use uh, the code extracted equation C0 to default if you if if you use if you change the false in the configuration the code the pi the, the uh, to true if you go here in the configuration file and you change this one to true in this case the the software will use this equation but as default usually the software using this equation okay for calculating the hoop stresses also uh, Uh, as you can see, this is the allowable equation that had been used by the software for the uh, ASMEP 31.3. Uh, this is based on the code as I showed you the equation in uh, 1B, uh, which had been used by the code. Uh, so if you need, if we need to calculate the allowable, we will depend on this uh, allowable uh, stress equation. And this is what we had used, the SA uh, equal to 1.2 called stress minus hot stress minus the sustained load. And this is why we, we wait to the end to calculate the uh, sustained load. And it will give us 324.2. Uh, let's go to our uh, output to check if we check it in the expansion the stresses you find that the allowable here is 32.4.2 it's the same so we are right the allowable stresses will be compared to the flex build uh, stress that had been calculated here which was 440.9 and we calculated manually by like this but here it's 440.2 so there's not a great difference it's just the decimals uh, this is the end of my presentation for the code calculations. I hope the last three presentation was helpful and the information was helpful to you. If you got any question, please uh, ask me. If you have any idea for a new presentation that you request uh, to be done to you, uh, uh, I will be very happy. Uh, to know so I can prepare a presentation for you uh, I hope you liking my videos if you like my videos please give me a thumb and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching my presentation